Good morning everybody and welcome to my seven week writing challenge. Um, this is day 13. Ooh, uh, my name's Hannah Velton. I'm a grief healer, writer and speaker. So uh, the course that I'm doing, it was a two week course and it's kind of coming to the end. We've got, we've had just had today and we've got tomorrow as the final writing challenge. If you've been watching all these films, you'll know that um, I've been unpicking the last sort of knots within our story to sort of straighten it all out. Christian's definitely been right next to me for the last probably three films. Today is more about what Christian and I are now going to do for you and obviously writing a th the book I've always called it the book because it is the book <laughs> it's the complete story of what we've been through um, obviously there is that writing um, I'm going to have a week off next week to um, well actually I've just written with Christian and and it's not actually I was going to take next week off but I'm not <laughs> um, we're going to come up with something to help you if you are starting to receive a calling to heal a long-held grief if you're starting to get signs if you're starting to get dreams Apparently the solstice that's coming up this weekend, we've also got a new moon, we've also got um, solar eclipse, like the energy is massive at the moment and this is why I've done my last bit of healing and not my healing but Christian, actually there was a lot in there of Christian's healing um, and just like getting all the goodness out of our story has been happening in the last couple of weeks now we're coming to this summer solstice new beginnings longest day eclipse transformation kind of um, energy and under the guise of solstice uh, christian's been saying to me that um there are going to be loads of signs and callings sent out to people particularly over this weekend that it's um, time to face fears it's time to courageously turn and look at um, long-held grief griefs I was I'm at this week I'm also doing another course I'm doing so many courses at the moment it's it's brilliant it's exactly what I've been needing because I always need I always need somebody kind of with me to come out about these things and um, certain people have come into my life very happily um, who are helping me become more visible become more fearless about talking um, talking about all our experiences um, and yeah the uh, I think it's it's becoming really obvious that there's time time now to face things that haven't been working in your life say uh if you've if you've got a feeling of just being lost a feeling that you're not actually doing what you're supposed to be here for you're searching for a purpose you keep repeatedly hitting brick walls you keep coming across you know depressing depressive episodes keep coming up and you think you can break them and then they come back and it's it's like now is the time to really break these cycles to look to yourself to take responsibility for yourself to not be a victim anymore to a grief that you think you can't heal it's really time to transform and transform from a place of fear into a place of love and we can by healing ourselves we can heal others we can heal like that the ripples that you can send out when you are healed are 
incredible. And to, I want to work with people one-to-one -one, um, who are number one ready <laughs> and have been receiving these callings and these signs. Um, when I say callings and signs, um, like a calling is like a, an itch you can't scratch. It's like um, you just keep coming up with the same sort of feeling of I should be doing something. I should be living my true life. I should be living as I really am rather than pretending to somebody be somebody I'm not. That's the kind of calling. It's kind of leads you on. And, it, and I know from I've talked to people before who've come for help. Um, they have seen Christian and I in action that they've seen films we've done they've read book our book lost and found and they just know that um they're being drawn to us it's just that simple it's and it's like you can't stop <laughs> you can't stop being pulled um so that's the kind of calling side which is drawing you into being healed the signs are something slightly different in that you will start receiving signs in your dreams you will start receiving physical objects like we were talking about the white feathers you will start crying at events that happen tears are like during the whole of my healing the tears were a massive massive sign to me that I had to explore why I was crying it could be anything it could be suddenly listening to music it could have been the lyrics that set me off it could have been watching a film it could have been something I just started to cry at when that I saw in the street you know like that welling up of emotion that you just can't stop um it might be actually I heard this morning somebody had burst into tears watching a um like a hedge being trimmed but all these beautiful roses were in the hedge and they were also damaged by this you know um just thoughtless shearing of the hedge uh and um that's obviously she she scooped up all these roses and um like heartbroken for these roses but it's obviously a metaphor for herself and something that she's uh something that is rising up in her to heal so things like that um tears are a massive sign um sorry so we were talking about the calling and the signs so yeah these are the kind of people that i want to work with but the thing is that i was only ready to heal and to work when i had the time and space to do that and the resources to be able to do that and you'll know, I mean, I had, I've got two children and there's no way I could have healed my grief when they were little, you know, all my attention was on them. And, um, yeah, I had a wonderful time with the kids when they were little, really lovely. And I'm, I'm like, we'll always treasure that, always treasure that. But now they're a bit older and, um, my husband, he was in, uh, an office for years and he, came out of the office and started working at home. So I had the ideal opportunity. The kids were a bit older. I had a supportive husband at home and I was able to find the time and space to start my healing. And and that's actually when I started getting all the calls and the, and the signs that it was, it was time for me to do it as well. So th the universe will be lining things up for you to make you aware and able to to start the healing process yeah it's that simple <laughs> it really is that simple um and you will probably resist like i did you will resist the calling to heal a grief multiple times i mean god i had the opportunity to know that christian was dead in 2016 um and i didn't want to hear it so it took another two years for me to go round and round the houses and actually it was it was it was all the right timing it should have taken me another two years because i wasn't ready to actually heal to hear that he was dead um but 
you will have got the call to um to heal your grief many times and you will have ignored it or thought oh I, I just do not want to have to face all that again I don't want to have to drag up the events I don't want to have to drag up all the grief grief again you know it's actually quite a frightening it's quite a frightening thing to have to think about but actually you know in a lot of ways you will have to answer the call because life will get really difficult you know things will keep happening to you life will get really like wading through treacle <laughs> you'll get like stuck and it might be that you've already got to that point because often um you know i we're back to back in 2003 when christian went missing i worked really hard to well i just froze i didn't know how to deal with my grief which i've talked about in the in previous films but actually i came to tell myself a story about what had happened to christian and i kind of made peace that he was probably dead and um just try and get on with life so i you know now i would see it as I stitched up my grief wound as best as I could. Um, but obviously I didn't do it. It was still there. I hadn't even really, I hadn't even touched any point of healing. It was just, yeah, it was, le it, it was festering and um, yeah, it was bound to come out. It, it, it's like, gets really toxic and it comes out in your life in the way you think, the way you act, the way you behave towards other people, the way you have the outlook on life. It affects it. Um, and that's kind of what's not the most dangerous, but it's when it's a grief which you think you have healed. Um, they're the they're the ones which are really the griefs that are really needing to be healed truly and wholly and I keep I'm hearing now it's like you're the hope of your ancestors that by doing your healing you will stop that grief from passing on down the generations I mean I've it's often said that things that you do in your life will affect seven generations ahead so if you can find you know if you're being called if you see the signs if you find the courage and the time and the space and the resources all opening out, out in front of you to look at healing your grief do take the opportunity you know it is going to be a marathon i can't lie but um it's a gentle process and it's a revelatory process and i was saying yesterday it's like when your loved one dies they leave you behind a gift and it's like that gift that you have to unwrap like whoop, layer by layer and um it's really oh is that gonna stay there um it's like their it's not their parting gift because they're still there they're still with you it's like their parting physical gift to you and by unwrapping that their gift you then are able to keep the connection with them you're able to heal anything that wasn't said anything that wasn't done uh, you know they might want to forgive they might want to explain all of that understanding and forgiveness and unconditional love is wrapped up in that gift and you then are able to move forward together um and a lot of and actually healing allows for massive transformations you know if i think back to how i was in 2003 i talked about this yesterday in the letter i wrote with christian unrecognizable to how i am now um yeah totally unrecognizable but that's a good thing <laughs> and yeah so moving forward it definitely feels like um oh yeah i was also given us uh another sign today about um, a moth it's like all these signs 
and all these symbols and these sort of illustrations can trigger things in you that's what they're there to that's what they're designed to be there for that you look at things you get a some kind of reaction to them it might be the tears it might be body chills it might be you know the hair standing up on the back of your neck that kind of thing um all of these bodily reactions to things that happen are a sign that you need to look at what happened um what what caused the sensation in you um yeah so this mo sorry this vision of this moth in a in a cocoon it's the same with butterflies isn't it it's like you're in that cocoon and when you're healing you're you're in that cocoon and it can be you know that's why i say you have to have the time and space to heal because it's a it's an insular process gradually releasing and morphing and changing and then once you're out of the cocoon or you're out of the cage of grief that's when you can spread your wings and you can start to transform and actually that transformation process of of coming back into the external world changed so that other people go oh you've changed you know wow okay what happened there it because healing's a private thing you know you have to have the time and the space to be able to do it and you do come out and you transform and you find your true self. A lot of the process of healing is finding your true self, finding your self-love, finding your purpose, finding your strengths, finding your abilities, which have probably for years, probably since childhood, been dampened down to fit into society and just to not be your true self. So, yeah, like your loved one dies, you get given this gift and my god it's it's transform it's really transformational but you have to have the courage to work through your grief and the thing is the way we do it we it's we call it the raise r a i s e approach is that you do all of the you don't do this all on your own you do it with your loved one um and i think that's why that make why kind of our approach and our story and how it's all happened why it's a unique unique way of of healing grief um and it might be that if you're watching this it might be that you've tried the sort of traditional ways of healing grief with counseling and belonging to therapy groups and and all of that and maybe it just hasn't worked for you or perhaps like myself and like others that i know who've come to me you haven't wanted to join groups you haven't really wanted to talk about your grief you've dealt with it in your own way um, but actually now you recognize that you need you need some help and you need some some pointers and some support but not you know the, the raise approach is very much about in is uh very much about empowering you know you know how to heal you have all of the abilities and things that you need inside you don't need us to give you the power to heal you have it already we just empower you and give you the tools and you know, like give us uh, like our experiences and the lessons we've learnt and what helped me and christian to heal because in in spirit they need to heal as well you know they've finished their life especially if it's been in traumatic circumstances you know they need to do a certain amount of healing as well so this is a a process that you know christian and i have done together and we have both healed alongside each other so by sharing you just share your healing is essentially what it is what it comes down to it's a very personal thing between you and your loved one and it's a beautiful thing it's very intimate and i really want the book that we want that we are going to write because we've got all past all those fears um i want it to be really uh intimate so you will get to read the letters that christian and i wrote to each other as we were healing we're not going to hold anything back from this it has to be the complete story otherwise it won't make sense <laughs> you know each layer that was unwrapped from our while we were healing has to be um shared 
Yeah, otherwise it just won't hang together as a story. Absolutely not. You know, a healing process is very, it's, I said before, it's very gentle. Like you get layers. When you're ready, another layer will open for you. You'll get time to rest in between the layers being opened. You know, this isn't, um, you know, like with the moon cycles, with the tides, with all of that, there's a time for things to be released and then there's a time for resting. There's a time for growing. There's a time for harvesting. There's a time for resting and, and like hibernation. And we, the cycle, that is a cycle that you have in the healing process. Uh, raises a really natural and... Yeah, it's a gentle process. It's not frightening. But I don't know if anyone's got any questions that they want answering. Um, do ask in the comments and I'll answer. But anyway, so yeah, so it definitely feels now that um, like over the last two weeks, the healing and whatever needed to be done has been done. And it's now a case of turning from Christian and I, like he's standing by my side and we look out and just tell our story and um, make an offer really of our services and our energy and um see see how we can help others that's really going to be next week's little conflab between us um and f yeah there was something else but I don't think it's the right time to talk about it now actually anyway um, there was just one other thing that happened this morning actually um, I got sent out of a, out of the blue a, um, a picture of a, fa a, a painting of my maternal grandparents there's a sort of connection uh, and my very early on in my healing I would get visits from my nana we called her nana and she was always very concerned about my appearance she was um like a, a pub landlady so she was always on show and had beautiful skin nana always had really beautiful skin right to the end she had beautiful skin always looked after herself anyway so she's um <laughs> she always tells me you need to get your you know you need to dye your hair you need to do your eyebrows whatever and she must be looking down now going Hannah for goodness sake it is lockdown I haven't been to the hairdresser you can tell I haven't had anything done <laughs> so um it's obviously time that um maybe lockdown that those restrictions are going to be eased soon so I can actually get some tidying up done but she's yeah she's always she's always been concerned about the way I present myself in the public eye and it must be that the time is coming soon where I will have to present myself and uh grandpa um they were actually divorced um in this physical life that I'm still in but they reassuringly, comfortingly, I don't know, they kind of like appear as, back as a team. In fact, spirit is like, they don't take anything from the physical into spirit. Well, they do, but they have this, um, Christian always described it as a, what does he describe it like a film you watch a film or you your sort of actions in life you understand what your actions caused and you you know you see the whole story and have a new perspective on your life and obviously feelings of maybe animosity or just you know things get worked out in spirit 
and everyone rubs along nicely again. <laughs> so it's reassuring to know that they're they're both up there. Um, and anyway, Grandpa was always around early on. When I first actually got the cooling, very much so, he was there to heal. And he was there to as a comfort and a protection and a support. And he kind of guided in his way. Um, he guided me onto the right path into um, healing myself rather than relying on others to heal me. So I think that's if they've just appeared back in as a sign this morning. So uh, yeah, if you are thinking about trying to get healing or, and healing your grief by maybe relying on others to do the healing for you, don't do that. <laughs> you can do all the healing yourself and you just need to have some pointers you need some support and you need to be empowered um, and that's you know that is what Krishna and I that's our path that's what the way we've found and we do now that's how what we want to share with other people so I think that might be um, just all we have to say so lots of love and I'll see you tomorrow which will be the final final full film so I don't know what's going to come up in that but yeah take care and I'll see you tomorrow bye